you're probably gonna hate me by the end of this video. Let's start this off by saying that I don't think there is a bad Assassin's Creed game. There are average AC games for sure, good AC games, great AC games, and then a couple that are damn near perfect. Today's video, I'm gonna be spelling out my opinions from the worst Assassin's Creed games to the best, and let's just get that pain train going with my lowest rated game of all time, Assassin's Creed Rogue. This choice may surprise a lot of you, and I actually read in my comments every day about how Rogue deserves more love, it's underrated, the story is great, etc, etc. Well, <coughs> you're wrong, and I'll tell you why. Released on the same day as Unity, but for previous gen consoles, Rogue's budget was severely limited. This meant, which is arguably the strongest part of the game, that almost all of it was copied and pasted over from Black Flag, and you'll notice that the combat, animations, and more are all largely the same. The naval battles were also expanded, which is actually another strong part of the game, and the parkour is just as good as Black Flag. But the world is small, the game length is a pathetic 10 hours, and the worst part of Rogue is the god-awful writing. I love the idea that we're on the Templar side now, playing as a gritty Irishman. It's awesome, a concept that I'd actually love to see them trying again. The execution, though, is just terrible. They simply make the assassins out to be total one-dimensional fools, with the Templars just being the good guys, a simple role reversal. The assassins, instead of the Templars this time, just use pieces of Eden recklessly for their own game, and there's also no reason for the conflict that's happening either. The entire plotline could have been saved by a simple conversation. To me, Rogue feels more like an alternate timeline or different universe, and it's almost insulting to the audience as a long-time player. Overall, this entire game just feels like a badly written side project or DLC, incredibly rushed with a poorly written story, and the gameplay is just a copy and paste. I've said this before too, but Shay has almost one of the worst Irish accents ever, making me firmly believe this game deserves to be in last place. Sorry to drop in on you. Assassin's Creed 2007 was a monumental year for gaming. We had Halo 3, Call of Duty 4, The Witcher, Bioshock, Uncharted, Crisis, and to top it all off, Assassin's Creed. Actually inspired by the very popular Prince of Persia, and as this is now a whopping 16 years old, and I'm ashamed to say I can remember its release, it wouldn't be fair to judge this on certain aspects of the game like the graphics, but there definitely were issues with this game. Gameplay-wise, the parkour itself was a little choppy but very enjoyable, with the three cities of Damascus, Jerusalem, and Acre a perfect parkour playground. If I had to give props for the best part of AC1, it would be the parkour system, which is by no means perfect, but for a first attempt, very impressive. The combat too, whilst a little repetitive, was actually pretty great, having options like grab, counter grab, heavy attack, defense break, dodge, and combo kill, and you'll find now that the newer games just have light, heavy, special attack, and parry. There was, however, a lot of distance to cover in between missions, which does make the pace of this game feel really up and down, but is by no means the worst thing in the world. Story-wise, and probably my most divisive opinion about AC1, is that it just kind of sucked. You play as Altair, who don't get me wrong, he gets way more fleshed out in Revelations, but in AC1, he's boring, he has very few lines of dialogue, and he tends to act like an attack dog. He never thinks for himself, he just gets pointed this way and that way into murdering whomever al Muaim tells him to. The gameplay loop is really repetitive too. You go to the city, go to the bureau, explore the city, find some side missions to find the target, kill the target, escape or kill the guards, return to the bureau, and then rinse and repeat. Don't get me wrong though, despite this, this game introduced us to the Assassin's Creed concept and was absolutely groundbreaking at the time. Without it, we wouldn't have had the series we all know and love today, and for that, Assassin's Creed 1 deserves our respect. I obviously can't not mention that Altair also weirdly can't swim due to a glitch in the Animus, apparently. Assassin's Creed Mirage The game dubbed as The Return to the Roots, Assassin's Creed Mirage again has a very mixed reception amongst the fans. After the period known as the RPG 3, older fans had been crying out for a smaller self-focused game, and Mirage was supposed to be the answer to that. As you probably know, Mirage initially was going to be a DLC to Valhalla, and then they decided to make it its own standalone game with a slightly cheaper cost of purchase. 
Its main positive was undoubtedly an actual return to stealth. In fact, if I was rating these games based solely on their stealth aspects, Mirage would easily make the top three. It is an absolute joy to take out your enemies silently with your variety of tools, particularly those really satisfying throwing knives, and you get a lot of opportunity to enjoy stealth with a good number of black box missions throughout the game. The setting of Baghdad, which looks absolutely gorgeous by the way, is the perfect accompaniment for Mirage's stealth, with the parkour, although not too dissimilar from Valhalla, being very enjoyable with almost non-stop free-running opportunities. If you don't want to, you could almost spend this entire game never stepping foot on the ground. It runs really well too, with everything feeling very smooth and well put together, allowing for some absolutely glorious stealth clips. The controversial Assassin's Focus, which sees you teleporting to and assassinating your enemies, I actually don't mind. If you want to use it, great, go for it, it certainly makes the game easier, and if you don't, you don't have to. I often forget that it even exists. Its biggest issue, however, in my eyes, is the hugely disappointing combat. In Mirage, Bazim has one set of weapons, a sword and a dagger, and three different options, light attack, heavy attack, and parry. I can see what they were trying to do here, to get you to focus on being more stealthy, which definitely worked, but when you do have to just use straight up combat, it just isn't enjoyable. It's a constant barrage of parrying your enemy, killing them, and moving on to the next one. I will say though, the combat finishes do look great, even if getting to that stage is dull as anything. In terms of its story, it's sadly pretty forgettable, with granted a twist at the end, but mostly it's that same formulaic AC scenario. Basim in himself, to me anyway, is kind of a boring character. In many ways, he just reminds me of a more modern Altair from AC1, with the occasional nod and smile so you know there is some form of personality under there. I won't go into the ending today, as I'm sure many of you haven't gotten to that point yet. Content wise too, with that lower price tag comes a much shorter experience, with a story clocking in at around 15 hours, and a platinum experience around 30 hours. Overall, the setting and stealth is one of the best AC experiences yet, with all of the other elements sticking this game in 11th place. Assassin's Creed Syndicate Let's kick this off by saying that the setting of London was, and still is, absolutely gorgeous. Being London born and bred, I am trying not to be biased here, but scaling buildings like Big Ben or St Paul's Cathedral, whilst traversing across Westminster Bridge in a horse and carriage, is absolutely iconic. The time period of 19th century London is our most modern Assassin's Creed setting ever, which in some sense aids to the game's downfall. The parkour, whilst almost identical to Unity's, never really gets going because the setting of London doesn't always allow it to. You have these wide streets, which whilst looking great, give you a lack of parkour opportunity. Here is why they added the grappling hook, which was a fun twist, but over time it gets repetitive, and further negates that need for parkour, which is a big part of a supposed Assassin's Creed game. The combat in Syndicate 2 definitely divides the fans. Not only were enemies absolute tanks who can be stabbed 20 times and walk away, the combat is designed with putting your enemies into stun mode, where they'll all be wobbling around whilst you stun everyone else, and then you finally take them all down with a giant kill animation. There are also only three weapons in the game, all with a very similar feel to them, which in my opinion just feels very lazy. With our protagonists Evie and Jacob, I actually really liked them. I enjoyed the concepts of the assassin brother and sister duo with conflicting personalities. And whilst I personally am a fan of Jacob, the game overall, and Jacob in particular, bring a really jokey tone to everything, which seems very odd for a time period and setting with murder around every corner. Our bad guy too is cartoonishly evil, and to try making a light-hearted game about murderous assassins feels like a really weird choice to me. The story itself is fine and pretty simple, just working your way up the villain ladder and killing the head honcho, a very standard AC formula, but we do meet some fantastic historical characters along the way, and that famous World War I mission they added was a nice touch. Overall, the setting is one of the best in the franchise, there are some nice new touches added, but everything else feels pretty formulaic, or doesn't live up to previous titles. Oh, what's this, Greenie? Assassin Christmas. Assassin's Creed Valhalla 
This game was the first piece of YouTube content I ever made, and I'm a big fan of shows like The Last Kingdom and Vikings, so it's hard for me to look at this objectively. It may surprise you to know, but this is actually the best-selling Assassin's Creed game of all time. However, I'd also imagine this is one of the least completed Assassin's Creed games of all time too. As an exploration RPG game, it's honestly pretty fantastic. The world is vast and beautiful, there are bags and bags of content for you to feast on, finding weapons, world events, raiding villages, all via on foot, on horseback or even in your ship, and that's outside the mainline story which is around 70 hours long, and the 3 DLCs on top of that. Combat wise, I actually really really enjoy it. There is a massive variety of weapons and abilities for you to enjoy and fight with, as well as some really decent kill animations, although once you do reach a certain level, even playing on the hardest difficulty, you are incredibly difficult to kill. Parkour, whilst in my opinion the mechanics of which are actually better than Odyssey and Origins, are largely useless as there is so much flat open space for you to roam around on and very little opportunity for you to utilise it. The same can be said for Stealth 2, but not only is it often difficult to use the environment, but due to the difficulty settings past a certain point it's totally not needed, and in true Viking fashion, charging in directly is almost always the simplest thing to do. The story itself is fine, I like Eivor as a character, they're in some sense your typical gaming protagonist, a cheeky chap with a hard upbringing, but the story is built around you taking over England, you go to each region, help out the locals a bit, succeed and on you go. There is actually some decent old school AC lore in this too, although focused around the world's worst modern day protagonist Layla Hassan. To summarise, AC Valhalla is a great RPG game, there is an insane amount of content too, some would say too much, but it's absolutely nuts to compare AC 1 and Valhalla and even think they're part of the same series. No, don't like that. Assassin's Creed Odyssey Much like AC Valhalla, I really enjoyed Odyssey and again, I think it's a really solid RPG game. Graphically, it's utterly incredible, with the ancient Greece setting, which by the way is the furthest back Assassin's Creed has ever taken us, is vast, colourful, beautiful to look at, and despite its size, it doesn't feel empty. Again, much like Valhalla, there are bags of content for us to enjoy, which is one of the largest complaints about the game, although it doesn't bother me, and Odyssey also boasts the largest map of the series, although the story can be completed in a respectable 45 hours. With the story, it's not bad, better than Valhalla's story in my opinion anyway, which is why I've decided it's just managed to stay above it. It's very much a Greek tragedy which obviously makes a lot of sense, and whilst I personally liked the whole choose Cassandra or Alexios option, and the emphasis on being able to choose a multitude of endings, I can understand that others wouldn't. The combat too is enjoyable, and again, much like Valhalla, there are tons of different weapons and abilities for you to try out, of course with the ability of kicking enemies off cliff edges being everyone's favourite. But again, like Valhalla, and we're following a trend here, the stealth aspect is definitely lacking. In Odyssey, you're not an assassin, and thus you don't even have a hidden blade, you instead have the Spear of Leonidas. Within this, the game forces you to make different builds, so you can make a stealth build if you want to, but it'll mean your combat skills are way downgraded, at least till later on. There is also a level scaling issue in Odyssey, and whilst it's not as bad as it is in Origins, which we'll get to later, some enemies can take hundreds of hits before they'll eventually topple over. On a positive note, the mythology in the game is really awesome, and within this offers us some of the best boss battles you're ever going to have fighting against the likes of Medusa, the Minotaur, the Sphinx and tons of others. Again, just like Valhalla though, it's so far from what Assassin's Creed used to be, but it is a great RPG game, no doubt about it. By the way guys, if you're enjoying this video so far, be a good assassin and punch that like and subscribe button, as it would really help my channel out. Assassin's Creed Revelations Back to the old school now with Ezio's final arc, Revelations should have been the ultimate AC game. Its best positive for me has to be the iconic story, finishing out the life as our aged favourite protagonist, even coupled with the return, and redemption in my eyes, of our original protagonist Altair, and in my opinion, Revelations may just have the best story of the entire franchise if it wasn't let slightly down by the modern day storyline. The side characters too are also worth mentioning, with Ezio's new lover Sophia really standing out amongst the others. 
Its next greatest positive has to be the fantastic Constantinople setting, where not only does it look great, but it's absolutely built for parkour, even including the new hook blade gadget, allowing us extra awesome rooftop maneuvers, as well as use in combat. It's a shame though, because Revelations did let us down in many ways. Whilst the story was great, it only has a measly 10 hour runtime, and in terms of side content, it's practically non-existent. The next time you decide to load up Brotherhood again, take a look at the map and how many mission prompts there are, and then take a look at Revelations. It's just downright lazy. To top this off, the side content they did include contained the infamous tower defense missions, and I'd love to know what the geniuses back at Ubisoft Montreal were smoking at the time they thought this up. It's not like a terrible game mode, it's just massively out of place in an Assassin's Creed game. If it was available for mobile download, hell, I'd probably play it. Revelations is a good Assassin's Creed game with an amazing story and a great setting, but it's lacking in actual content to enjoy, and before you know it, your time with the greatest Assassin's Creed protagonist is over. Ah, the end of an era. Assassin's Creed 3. This for many was one of the first Assassin's Creed games they ever played, and at the time it was known as a bit of a failure. The pacing of the game was a big complaint, which I'll get to in a mo, with our main man Connor having massive Ezio size shoes to fill, and he is so vastly different to our charismatic Italian, which makes a lot of sense considering his horrendous backstory. Other complaints included the naval missions, which yes I know I know they did span the upcoming Black Flag, but they were definitely far from perfect, as well as the game including lots and lots of bugs and glitches. Everyone's biggest complaint though is the pacing of the game, with you being unable to play as our main protagonist for hours. You instead play as the cold British Haytham Kenway, until he's eventually revealed to be a Templar, where you then begin playing as his half Native American son. Connor though actually has extra parkour abilities that Haytham doesn't have, so when you do finally get to playing him, there is even more to learn, making a lot of the game feel like a tutorial. There were a lot of positives though, with not only a massive graphical improvement, but with the parkour now allowing us to climb through trees and up cliffs, making the overall exploration feel fantastic. Many also claim AC3 as having the best combat of any AC game, with the kill animations being absolutely brutal, making Connor feel like an unstoppable murderous tank. The story and setting though is probably the game's greatest positive, with the American Revolutionary War setting being near perfection, with the creators employing many historians to give us as much detail as possible. Within that setting comes a fantastic revenge story, a warring father and son dynamic, an amazing second antagonist of Charles Lee, and the modern day side of things were top tier, particularly those Desmond missions. Some people say that after Desmond died, the modern day story died with him, and I'm inclined to agree. The Homestead missions within the game really deserve a mention too, as they round off Connor's character really nicely. We're now 11 years on since Assassin's Creed 3 released, and if you can pick up the remastered version from 2019, I would highly recommend it. To me, it definitely deserves being in the top half of the best AC games. Assassin's Creed Unity I'm sure we all know that Unity had one of the worst game releases of all time. It was absolutely rammed full of bugs alongside a very rocky co-op experience, but as we're almost 10 years on, I'm not going to factor that into this review. We'll start with its biggest negative, which for me, just like Rogue, is its disappointing story. Arno as a character is fine, to offset the grumpy Irishman Shay in AC Rogue, they gave us a charismatic French Ezio, your standard cocky protagonist, but even the entire story of Unity is very similar to AC2's. Their biggest mistake with the story though, is not having Arno ever even meet Shay. This can hardly be considered a spoiler now, but I'll give you a quick warning just in case you were ever going to play Unity. Why on earth does Arno never find and kill Shay? Considering he is the one to assassinate Arno's father when Arno is just a young boy, they were literally setting up potentially the best revenge story in the entire franchise and then just decided to bypass it altogether. This would without a doubt have likely increased their sales too as you'd feel the need to own both games, and to this day I'm genuinely bewildered as to why they never thought of this. 
The combat too, to me anyway, is nothing special. It's very much a standard parry and attack system, with Arno sometimes feeling a little unresponsive or not as quick as you'd like him to be. The stealth, particularly when sneaking through buildings and switching between hideable places, can also feel a little detached. Now onto the good though and where the game really shines. The setting of Paris as a start is absolutely breathtaking. Graphically, if this game was released today, I doubt people would bat an eye, but the hustle and bustle of Paris, the grime, the crowds, the intricate building details are honestly incredible. The NPCs in this game are actually really responsive too, which adds so much to the experience. If you assassinate someone in this game, entire crowds are going to run away from you. You probably know this too, but when the Notre Dame caught fire in 2019, they actually used the AC Unity schematics to help with the rebuild. That's just how detailed this game is. Other benefits include the game's customization and outfits, which looked great by the way, as well as the new detection system and the co-op missions, which were super enjoyable. When I was younger, I can remember coming home to jump online with friends and just having an absolute blast. Unity's biggest pro though, of course, has to be its parkour. I do see some comments actually bashing Unity's parkour, but I think the majority of us can agree it is the best Assassin's Creed has ever given us. Even to this day, YouTubers like Altair Stealth, who you should check out by the way if you haven't, are still making incredible Unity clips, as getting that perfect run is just so addictive. Arno just has a certain panache for free running that no other protagonists have, and paired with that beautiful Paris setting, Unity deserves its spot in fifth place. Assassin's Creed Origins To many, Origins' spot on this list as the fourth best game in the entire Assassin's Creed timeline will be controversial, solely because of the massive change in format. After the incredibly disappointing sales of Syndicate, which wasn't helped by the buggy launch of Unity I'd add, Assassin's Creed decided to take the game in a totally different direction, and honestly, I'm glad they did. I've said this before in previous videos, but if Assassin's Creed didn't make the change to the RPG style, and had kept going with the same format, I could almost guarantee people would have been moaning. Change is difficult in any circumstance for sure, but by taking a year off without releasing an AC title and spending it building a monumental new RPG experience, Origins managed to double the sales of AC Syndicate, and with good reason. To begin, the setting of Egypt was, and still is, absolutely stunning. It gave us a colourful and rich world, teeming with life and so much to explore. At this point, this was further into the past than Assassin's Creed has ever taken us before, and on top of how good it looks, Origins is widely regarded as the best depiction of ancient Egypt we've ever seen. It's so good in fact, the National Geographic Museum in Washington DC has made gameplay from Assassin's Creed Origins part of an exhibit about ancient Egypt. The other massive positive of this game is without a doubt our protagonist Bayek. Different than your usual good guy hero, Bayek is a conflicted assassin with a very tragic past, out on his own path of personal revenge. We're also treated to his character shaping moment shortly into our playthrough, giving us the player a reason to care so badly about wanting Bayek to get his revenge. The voice actor Abubukar Salim, who I knew from Raised by Wolves, absolutely gutted that's been cancelled by the way, is incredible. Personally, to me, giving us the best performance for any Assassin's Creed character so far. The cutscenes too really deserve a mention just for how vivid and well created they are. On top of this, the combat was enjoyable, the exploration was really fun, who knew sliding down a pyramid would be so amazing, and this really was the first Assassin's Creed game where we could decide exactly how we played. Origins would be a 10 out of 10 if not for one thing, and that is the level scaling. In order to play the origin storyline, you'd have to complete side quest after side quests, leveling up Bayek until you could move on to the next point. I really don't mind grinding in games if it's for gear or for weapons, but to grind just for a number is a real pain for me, and there was a lot of grinding involved. With this change in format brought a lack of stealth and parkour, and a lot of the older fans just instantly turned their noses at it, which I can understand. Overall though, this is one of the greatest RPG games of all time, and lore and history wise, a fantastic Assassin's Creed game. Assassin's Creed 2 Released way back in 2009, 
there probably aren't many gamers who don't know the name of Ezio Auditore. He is without a shadow of a doubt the most iconic character in the franchise and probably within the top 10 gaming characters of all time and a massive reason why so many people fell in love with Assassin's Creed. He's cocky, funny, loyal, and although outside of just AC2, we see this entire man's life, even the moment he's born. After doing some research, I actually found that not everyone did warm to Ezio in AC2, stating that he had little growth throughout the entire course of the game, but I think it's safe to say that they're in the minority. The story itself is a massive strong point, an incredibly well-crafted plot where we meet our happy protagonist and his family, and then they're unfortunately murdered before our very eyes, and we follow Ezio's journey as an assassin whilst he seeks revenge. Our villain of Rodrigo Borgia, or future Pope Alexander VI, is a fantastic antagonist to get us all riled up against. The modern day storyline too is one of the best in the entire series, Desmond being rescued from Abstergo, meeting Sean, Lucy and Rebecca, the introduction of the first civilization and everything that then follows. The other massive positive of this game has to be some of the most recognizable and legendary missions of all time. Whether it's soaring over Italian rooftops and Leonardo's flying machine, brawling as a young Ezio against a rival family, or heading to the Vatican to assassinate Rodrigo, these missions will stay with me forever. One of the game's very few negatives in my opinion is the fact that we can't replay any of these incredible missions, you have to restart the entire game. The setting of Renaissance Italy is also absolutely beautiful, taking you to Florence, Venice, Monterra Regione and more, all of which have been accurately recreated to fit into the game's historical setting. It also improves on everything from AC1, including the graphics, parkour, fantastic combat, and I could not neglect to mention that amazing soundtrack. To many, this will always be their favourite Assassin's Creed game ever. On to now what I consider to be the best pirate game of all time, we have the legendary Assassin's Creed Black Flag. This is almost a perfect game with so many different positives to talk about, and we'll start with the obvious naval aspects, where we get to now sail around the seas, listening to those memorable sea shanties with our crew, and it's a total vibe that I never want to leave. Naval Combat 2 was really satisfying and challenging at times, with many weapons, tough enemies, and a complicated upgrade system. This was the largest Assassin's Creed game of its time, where the exploration and world, lush jungles, quaint towns, open seas were an absolute joy to explore and behold. Everything in the previous games had been improved, parkour was upgraded from AC3, combat was also on par with some amazing kill animation sequences, and the soundtrack too was absolutely iconic, perhaps only second to AC2. Our story though just shone through, set during the golden age of piracy, where we're drawn into a conspiracy between the high-ranking Templars within the British and Spanish Empire. We are treated to a new and extremely likeable protagonist Edward Kenway, who is incredibly different to his future grandson Connor, and is one of the best AC leads we've ever had. Edward is hilarious, strong, serious when needed, and although a greedy pirate, by the end we see a huge change in Edward, with his arc almost coming full circle. Supporting Edward too are some very memorable side characters. We have Adewali who will shortly be getting a spin-off of his own, as well as perhaps the best side character ever of Blackbeard, who totally steals whatever scene he is in. It's worth stating that Black Flag was a big deviation in what the games used to be. Sure, most aspects were similar, but largely up until this point, we're used to exploring just a few close-knit cities, and now we have the entire West Indies to explore. It was the next step up from AC3, and I'm really glad they took the game in this direction. Change is, after all, mostly a good thing. My one and only complaint, and this is definitely a universal issue, is the overuse of the game's tailing missions. Tailing missions are a staple in Assassin's Creed, and yes, it can be fun to sneak through streets or stalk your enemies over rooftops, but in Black Flag, they make up literally 25% of the missions, and that is a problem. If it wasn't for this fact, Black Flag would probably be the number one on my list, and I sincerely hope, just like AC3, we do eventually get that remastered version. In a world without gold, we might have been heroes. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. 
Yes, taking that number one spot is the ever so worthy AC Brotherhood. Interestingly, Brotherhood was initially designed to be a part of AC2, but as it grew to be bigger and bigger, it had to become its own game, hence why it released just a year later in 2010. Because of this, the gameplay didn't advance too much from AC2, and that was a good thing. The combat had minor improvements made, where fighting was fine-tuned into being an absolute joy, seamlessly combining our hidden blade with other weapons, with the kill animations being incredibly brutal and never getting old. The parkour was just as on point as it was in AC2, and the stealth was also just as fantastic, with one added extra bonus. What made Brotherhood truly amazing was the new ability to call in and send out your own assassins on missions. We're not the low-level assassin initiate in AC2, we're now the master leading others, utilizing them in times most needed. We were also introduced to a fantastic new multiplayer, which never gets enough praise, particularly the wanted mode, which is a bit like a game of cat and mouse, where you hunt players and also get hunted yourself, and you're also trying to blend in and act like an NPC, adding an actual degree of stealth to the game. The servers have been abandoned now, but it remains a really incredible and quite original concept. Our setting of Rome was absolutely gorgeous, being able to scale and explore massive landmarks like the Pantheum, Colosseum and more, and while sure we're only in one city, it was split into different districts which feel really different, unlike other great maps like Baghdad from Mirage or Paris from Unity, where whilst they looked great, everywhere feels sort of the same. We're also treated to one of the best villains ever, Cesare Borgia, a villain so cunning and treacherous he even murders his own father, and the story in general is just so enjoyable. Taking the fight to the Templars, liberating the city and building up the Assassin's Brotherhood, even the modern day story which I'm never overly bothered about, was fantastic hiding out in the Auditory Villa, searching for the Apple of Eden. The missions are just as iconic as AC2, whether that's Leonardo's War Machine missions, infiltrating the Colosseum and becoming part of the production, chasing down Chaser Ray for one of the best boss fights ever. Best thing too, was now you could replay them as well. Like our two previous games, this was incredibly difficult to find any negatives on at all, but if I'm being really picky, Rome is too small a setting with not enough content within it, and there is too much open space, a common complaint about the latest AC games. The biggest issue Brotherhood had was Lucy's death, which feels very out of place, and this makes total sense. There were some issues with Kristen Bell wanting more royalties, so Ubisoft decided to kill Kristen off, hence why it feels so strange that Lucy was supposedly a Templar. Aside this though, in general, the modern day storyline was probably the best out of the entire series. Hey, what's the matter you, Aldeia? That's racist. You're racist. Overall, it improved on the almost perfect AC2. We could now replay those amazing missions. It added a kill streak system. Everything was extremely polished. The new multiplayer was amazing. The story was fantastic. Rome was a joy to explore. We now control our own usable assassins and we get to play Ezio at his very best, leading me to putting this game as the best Assassin's Creed game ever. So, do you hate me? Do you agree with my rankings? Let me know down in the comments. And if you want to know about the time periods I want Assassin's Creed to take us to next, then why not watch my next video?